What's shaking, Navigation Nation? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, February 8th. Welcome to this week's video update. I don't know about you guys, but I, I actually don't like Fridays. You know how most people wake up on Monday mornings, they hate Mondays, going to work to a job they hate. Well, I hate Fridays because that just means the markets are closing. Can't trade for another two days. At least it's not a three-day weekend, though, so I guess that's good. But anyway, let's jump in. Uh, before I get to the alerts, a couple of housekeeping notes. First of all, if you have not registered, make sure you go to navigationtrading.com slash small exchange. We're going to be doing a web class with the man, the myth, the legend, Tom Sosnoff from Tasty Trade to go over what the small exchange is, how you can get involved, what it's all about, why they're creating it. It is February 12th, that is Tuesday of next week at 3.15 Central Time. Make sure you register. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity. They, they've applied for approval of the small exchange. So it's not even approved yet, but they're giving uh, Tastyworks customers a chance to get in before it's even approved and, and to get a seat or subscription on the small exchange. Now, back in the day, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, I guess 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, when the exchanges first came about and people bought seats, you know, I mean, they were they were trading for around, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars at that time, and people were la later selling their seats on the exchanges for millions of dollars. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen here, and I'm not even saying that this should be looked at as a investment opportunity by any means, but being able to get a, a seat on an exchange and be able to get reduced fees for us as active traders could be a huge, huge deal. So anyway, check it out. I want to learn more along with you guys. And uh, we'll have the we'll have Tom Sosnoff there. We can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. And uh, look forward to, to seeing everybody there. Next, who got caught being hot this week? Each week in the community, we like to recognize a member who is engaged and active and answering questions, asking good questions. This week goes to Big Willie. Congrats, Big Willie. Uh, he actually was uh, more active last week, but got a little overshadowed, uh, overshadowed by uh, starting to call him Earnings Mike, who's been posting his earnings trades, which are great. Keep that up, Mike. Uh, but congrats to you, Big Willie. You got caught being hot and... As always, I, uh, I'll send, I send you a, a private link where you can grab some Trade Hacker swag and enjoy that. So congrats. Keep that up. Community is booming and keeps getting better and better the more people we get in there and get engaged. So really excited about where that's going. I think it's really going to turn into something special. All right, let's jump into the alerts for this week starting on Monday the 4th. First trade was a rolling adjusting trade that we did in Natty Gas. So we rolled, we had two uh, adjusted kind of inverted short strangles in Natty Gas, and we rolled both of them this week. The first one was on Monday, and we rolled this from March to April. And I know that the, the brokers do it a little bit differently, so just make sure you're paying attention to the days to expiration. Uh, in TOS, March has 21, April has 50. Uh, I think it's a little bit different in, I think uh, it's a little bit different in Tasty Work. So just make sure you're, you're paying attention to the days to expiration. That's why I always post those in the alerts. So we, we adjusted both the, the calls and the puts. Instead of just rolling down our calls, we actually adjusted our puts too because they are getting too far in the money. And, and here, let's go to the platform and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If we go to Natty Gas after the you know the massive move down we saw from the from the top, um, if we go to the trade tab, what you'll see is that we went ahead and rolled our puts down too. I mean, look at what this 3.25 where where we rolled down to, is it the 97 delta? Um, and, and so you know we were at the whatever we were at four four point something. But I mean, look at it. Look at the open interest. I mean, it's just really sparse. It's not very often that you get to the point of inversion that uh, you're, you're that far in the money. And so we don't have to deal with this very often. But in this case, this is one of the reasons I wanted to get out of being so in the money and roll it up. And we, you know, we wanted to choose a strike 
uh, that had some good open interest both on that one and and this one here and that's why we chose the 3.25 and the 3.0 for for our other piece and so by by doing this let me go back to the uh, platform what you'll see is that we we bought this back for 1.327 and then we re-entered so that when we re-entered we, we resold for 0.638 so you might be looking at saying okay you rolled for a net debit though you know how is how is that a good thing and the reason we did it is a implied volatility is still high so we want to have exposure in that gas and b we're when we do these rolls we're playing the cyclicality of that market you know so when we're rolling down rolling down rolling down you know we're anticipating at some point prices are going to stabilize or bounce higher and that's still what we're that's still what we're playing for the other thing is keep in mind that when you roll in inverted positions position and uh, you adjust those those tested strikes um, even though you're you're not getting as much of a credit when you when you resell those we actually have a higher max profit and a higher theta so it's a little bit backwards when we're inverted and we will we adjust those pieces than if we were not inverted okay so I just I want to point that out because we don't do we don't have to do this very often because we usually don't have a situation with uh, with this type of moves that we've seen in that gas but it's important to understand why I did what I did and to to make sure it understand to make sure it makes sense in your head and and makes sense logically from a mathematical standpoint even though we rolled this and we got we did it for a net debit it's because a we're still bullish in playing the cyclicality in that gas so looking for a bounce higher and it gave us a higher max profit and more theta uh, for for where price currently is so Hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any other questions on that, feel free to post in the community and I'll, I'll try to clarify. Uh, but this is our 2.8, 3.25 position. So again, it's looking for a little bit of a bounce higher to get back into range there. And then very similar with this piece here where we're, we're in range here, but also still bullish looking for a little bit of upside to benefit that piece. And again, like I said, if we look at UNG, the corresponding ETF, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, IV percentile at 65, you know, so still good premium in those options. So we still want to have that exposure in natty gas. And if we could just get a little bit of up movement or some consolidation in price, that would be extremely helpful for that position. Next trade was rolling adjusting trade in IWM. So we had uh, our short call vertical in IWM from our iron condor that we went ahead and rolled to keep that short delta exposure and to extend duration on that trade. So if we look at IWM, uh, we've got two pieces here. We've got our full iron condor, which you can see we've got a decent amount of profit in, not quite enough to book yet, uh, but potentially next week uh, if price stays stable there. And then we've got this short call vertical from our other iron condor. And so just looking for a little bit more downside before we do anything with that one. Next trade was a closing trade in Costco. So this is a short call vertical that we originally put on for some short delta exposure. Uh, we ended up booking a nice profit over 50% of max profit on that one. If we take a look at, uh, at a chart of Costco, you know, we got into this thing way back here around this area and I mean this thing just traded sideways what felt like forever we finally got a little bit of downside enough to get out and book 50 percent of max profit so good hold and wait on that one next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in SPY so similar to IWM we rolled our uh, one of our short call verticals from Feb to March and so let's take a look at SPY very similar to uh, uh, IWM so we've got so hang on here's the one that we rolled we've got two pieces here this is the one we rolled you can see the markets come down a little bit since we've done that so we've gotten some profits back in that one our other piece is basically at, at almost at max loss so we haven't done anything with that because you know we could close it out where it is but really we're just holding on this and just in case there's a slight chance we make a huge move down and get back some of that some of that profit uh, otherwise, next week, th this is still in Feb, so next week is expiration week. 
we've got uh, we're at seven days to expiration now and so we will definitely be managing that next week and depending on where we're at with short delta and everything uh, we will either just close it out take a loss on that piece or we will look to roll if we if we need some more short delta or we may look elsewhere we'll, we'll just have to see where we're at with everything at that point uh, my inclination would be to just probably just to close it kind of like we did with Apple today because it's so far out of range uh, but we'll see uh, we'll see what the numbers look like and where the market's at early next week before we do anything next trade was a opening trade in snapchat snap snap and we did a post earnings short put uh, short puts not not a vertical it's such a low price symbol that we went ahead and just did short naked puts you can see uh, after earnings they blew out earnings uh, to the upside anytime there's a, a move above and beyond the expected move we anticipate the price is going to uh, stay steady to higher took a little bit of heat yesterday went down but then cranked right back up and it's it's on fire to the upside up almost five percent just today and so we've got some profit there looking for about 40 or 50 percent of max profit before we book that one next trade was a was the other piece of the natty gas I already mentioned that I already went over that and then we had a closing trade in forward slash 6b which is the British pound Booked over 25% of max profit on that piece of the trade, after, meaning after the roll. It was almost a straddle, so you know we were looking to book that uh, pretty quickly. We weren't waiting for 50% of that, so we went ahead and booked that when it, we were a little over 25% of max profit on that piece. Overall, after the couple adjustments, made uh, a little over 500 bucks on the trade. Now that one is, I was looking to actually re-enter that today. If we look at FXB, which is the corresponding ETF, uh, to get an idea, uh, we've just had such a, a decent amount of contraction and implied volatility the last couple of days. I'd rather I'm going to wait till early next week. If it's still at this level, we'll put it on. But you know, hopefully, we get a little bit of a pop higher, get some better pricing on those options before we before we put that on. Uh, but we'll see where it's at uh, early next week. But I'd like to get back into that one get some exposure in uh, in the currencies uh, the other currency that really is liquid enough to trade would be FXE or the euro and if we take a look at FXE you can see the applied volatility is just next to nothing in that and I was actually looking at calendars in there but the pricing they're just too low priced because currencies are such a low volatility symbol um, <clears throat> so nothing nothing going on in the euro at this point Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SMH, the semiconductor ETF. And we've so we've got two pieces on here in SMH. Uh, implied volatility popped its head back up above that 50 level that we like to see before we sell premium. So here's the one that we already had on. This is an adjusted strangle. You can see prices hanging out up here in the upper end of the range. And then the piece that we just added. Let me close out this theoretical piece. Uh, is this one so we just added a new centered strangle out in March uh, both of these are in March you can see it's still very centered got a little bit of profit there but just waiting for some more before we do anything on that one next trade was a closing trade in Apple so I referenced this earlier but this one this was a long put vertical that we originally put on for short Delta exposure we had just seven days to expiration on this one it was way out of range so instead of rolling we just went ahead and took a loss on this one uh, we've we've been rolling this for several cycles but we just wanted to a reduce our short Delta a little bit to help balance our portfolio and um, and with this one so far out of the range it just made sense to close out instead of rolling uh, so that we are out of Apple next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in EEM so we rolled our short call vertical in EEM kept the strikes the same uh, we're able to collect a little bit of a credit on that roll and so if we take a look at EEM you'll see this is this is what it looks like now so just looking for some downside to benefit that if we do get a pop in implied volatility uh, I will probably enter a new iron condor kind of centered around uh, wherever price is but you can see implied volatility is contracting today and um, 
and so we're, we're not looking to add to this at this point. Next trade, and lastly, was an opening trade in Netflix. So again, just trying to balance our portfolio, add a little bit, reduce a little bit of the short short delta that we have. Um, so in Netflix, we did a bullish position to add some long delta. And what I'm looking at here is, you know, Netflix had a big move up, drop down a little bit, push up, drop down a little bit. So anticipating a, another push higher. Uh, and, and so nothing nothing magic about that, but just looking at a good entry point to add some some long delta. And with the market coming down the last couple of days, uh, looks like potentially a decent entry point for a continuation to the upside. And so Netflix just looks like a decent opportunity for that. Uh, as far as where we're at uh, on our ratio, so we like to be between one to one and five to one on our short delta to theta ratio. We are currently at uh, right at about three to one. So good spot. Uh, we are getting closer to three and a half to four. And so that's why we made some of those uh, portfolio delta adjustments with cutting loose our Apple trade, adding this Netflix trade, and that helps balance us. And we're back down to about three to one, which I think is, is a great great spot to be uh, uh, for where we're at. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Uh, we've got oil. Uh, we've got two pieces on in oil. So let's separate these. And you can see we, we got to a point now where we're over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. But in oil, we've got uh, we've still got 35 days left to expiration so I'm not gonna roll out to uh, May uh, because we've still got a ton of time left once we get to a point where we've got about 60 days to expiration in the next cycle of May uh, which is about seven days away then we might then we'll potentially look to to lock that in and roll out to the next month but at this point we're just gonna hold on to this still fairly centered um, oops. Still fairly centered, so you know we're just gonna play it. If we get a little bit of upside, that'll be good. Just looking for some more time to pass, some more theta to decay in that one. And then we've got our other adjusted strangle, which is the 56 put 54 call. Pretty much same story, just hanging out here, just waiting for some more time to pass before we do anything with that one. So we'll spread out those those rolls, and we're coming back really nicely in oil. Um, and, and so hopefully within the next couple cycles, we'll be back to profits, which would be awesome to see. And, and I can't wait. I'm going to, I'm going to do kind of a recap of both the, both the Nat gas and the oil trades. Once we close out of those, uh, to really show you guys the power of, of, of what this, what happens when you take a huge loser out of the gate and you can turn it around into a winner. What we're not out of the woods yet, but, uh, coming back very nicely. Uh, ES, we've got a long put vertical here, uh, which expires next week as well. Yep, seven days to expiration. And so we will look to, we originally put on this as a short delta exposure. Uh, we're going to continue to keep it on as part of our short delta. And so we'll, we'll look to roll this next week. Uh, I mentioned that gas. Wheat, we've got uh, uh, iron condor on here still in wheat. And just waiting for a little bit more profit before we book that one. DIA, kind of a similar story as the ES. We've got this short call vertical, uh, which is way out of range. Uh, hopefully, we get a little bit more downside next week, and we'll look to either close or roll that. And then we've got our other piece on here, which is already in March, which you can see price is still within range here, but just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that piece. I mentioned EEM, EWW, we've got this adjusted strangle, price is hanging out right here. Uh, we are at a point where we're back to profits in EWW, I believe. I'll have to double check the trade tracker to, to see exactly where we're at, but uh, we're at a point where uh, we've got a little bit more downside movement, a little, little, um, little more theta decay. Uh, we'll decide if we want to roll this one out in, in uh, extend duration or go ahead and book it. But uh, hopefully next week we'll have that decision ability. Um, if it does continue to move higher, you know, out out of range here, 
you know, implied volatility has popped its head back up. Now, if it moves up, we'll probably get a little bit of a contraction. Uh, but if we have decent premium, we may look to add to that one. Otherwise, we'll just manage as necessary. EWZ, we've got a straddle, which is has been adjusted from a strangle. And you can see prices come back nicely into range here. So just continuing to wait for a little bit more theta decay and some time to pass before we do anything on that one. I mentioned IWM, I, IEYR, this is the real estate ETF. So this is one I've, I've tried to get filled on several times. You can see prices had breached the upside break even by a significant amount. And there for a while, uh, there was still a decent amount of premium left in the puts. Now that premium has decayed to a point where it makes sense to close this out. But I had an order in almost all morning, didn't get filled, so I'm not gonna chase it. Obviously, if it moves any higher, we'll go ahead and close out this untested side. Uh, but at this point, we're just kind of holding on and, and you know seeing if we get a bounce back, uh, even though it's it's well out of range. Um, and then we've got uh, our other one, which is another tight iron condor. Uh, you can see right here, still very centered, so just waiting for some more time to pass on that piece. I mentioned Netflix, QQQs. We've got two sets of short call verticals here. Uh, you can see prices just inside range on that one. And then on this one, similar, just looking for some downside to benefit that. SMH, we've got, uh, I already went over SMH, SNAP, SPY, XLK. So we've got this that we uh, originally put on for that long, uh, excuse me, short delta exposure. It's a long put vertical. Uh, it, it's out of range here, just looking for some downside to get back into range there. We are in March with this one, so a lot of time, nothing to do in that one yet. And then XLV, this is another one I feel like we've been in forever, uh, and it's just been kind of hanging in, get a little bit in range, a little out of range, a little in range, just kind of bouncing around. So if we can just get a little bit of downside, we will book that next week. If not, we will look to potentially uh, roll or close regardless of where it is. Uh, this is in Feb with seven days. So we're going to do something with that one early next week. And XRT, we've got an adjusted strangle here, which has come back nicely and just waiting for a little bit more profit before we do anything with that one. So those are all the trades. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Don't forget to register at navigationtrading.com forward slash small exchange for that web class on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you Monday.